Northwood by John Fraser. Fade in. Interior, LCD TV on a wall with a rolling news channel. Tom Brady, in his 50s, slim with gray hair and smart dark suit, is about to read the news headlines. His name is on screen. There is a picture of a submarine set to one side of the screen as he speaks. If you are just joining us, these are the headlines. Tension is at fever pitch between the Kremlin and the White House over North Korea. There are unconfirmed reports of a vessel collision from a NATO flotilla and a failed missile test in the Korean Peninsula. The sound of wind howling over black. Exterior, an ocean in half light. A barren seascape of blue-gray stretches to the horizon. Interior, nuclear submarine, CO's quarters. Jack Targ in his early 40s, balding, slim, with a smartly pressed shirt showing his rank. He is seated behind a small desk with a coffee and family pictures. He is on the phone. Finally, some good news. Those are stellar exam results. You should take them out for a treat. Whole life ahead of her. Great news. There are sounds of a voice on the end of the line, although the dialogue is not clear enough to be intelligible. The voice is clearly female and excitable. So, when's the presentation night? Jack holds his forehead with one hand while he listens. Okay. You take care, and tell them I love them, and I'll speak again soon. Love you too. More voices are heard over the phone. Then there is a pause, and Jack hangs up. He lifts his chin and pulls at his collar to ensure that it is not too tight. Jack stares for a moment into the middle distance, gets up, and walks to the cabin door. There is an award for valor that can be plainly seen as the door slides shut. Interior, nuclear submarine control room. Jack makes his way to the hand microphone and takes it from its stand. He looks at the men around him as they exchange glances and acknowledge his presence. He clears his throat and presses on the mic button. <clears throat> I have an incredibly important announcement to make to you all. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. A number of the crew in the control room swivel and look directly at Jack with curiosity. It has been confirmed to me that my daughter just aced her entry exams and is on her way to medicine school. The expressions on the crew change from curiosity to joy, and they let out a big cheer. <laughs> Clearly, she has it in her sights to upstage her old man. Jack walks towards one of the control panels and stretches the microphone cord as he does so. As you know, we are in the middle of NATO exercises with the Russians taking a keen interest. With so many vessels in close proximity, we need to be on our toes. I'll update you shortly on the minor collision news from earlier. Exterior, an ocean in fading light. The surface of the sea is more choppy than before, and the light is dimmed. A seagull wheels and falls to the tumble of the wave froth below. Sound of traffic and some muffled voices. Interior, Ministry Office in Whitehall. Day. Two men and one woman are sat around an oval table in a bright, modern office. Pictures of various warships are on the walls. There are writing pads and some buff folders with cups of coffee on the table. Jeff Forsyth, early 50s, tall, slim, with a Royal Navy military uniform. Miriam Birch, late 30s, slim, trouser suit, iPad. And Alex McKenzie, 40s, heavy set business suit, balding. Just when we thought the Cold War was a distant memory, it gets hot. All because of this rogue state. Jeff pulls one of the buff folders towards him and starts to leap through it. Well, Bert has just been in dry dock for maintenance. Any adverse problems? Anything that could cause safety issues? Jeff looks up from the buff folder and pulls one of the sheets of paper from it, paraphrasing a note on it. On a recent patrol, a seawater pipe burst, causing a flood. They also had a problem with the propulsion blend. Alex nods as he listens, and looks across to Miriam, and then back to Jeff. She's nuclear? Yes, a hunter killer. 80s vintage. Crew? Uh, 107. Alex has both hands on his forehead, and his elbows on the table. He looks down, and then back up to Miriam. <sighs> Christ. Has the minister been fully briefed? I've just come from his office. A high-level brief at this stage until we know more about the Russians' reaction. He's looking for a plan, not just diplomatic. Jeff is fitting the page he pulled from the file back again, and looks sharply at Miriam. What does not just diplomatic mean? The Russians have become more aggressive recently, and a close-quarters encounter was not totally unexpected. 
Intel from Northwood Control suggests they feel threatened over their stance on North Korea. Alex snatches at one of the other buff folders on the table and looks agitated. Threatened? So who initiated the Swedish incident? They openly admitted to that. Russian seaboard and airborne activity has increased dramatically over the past few weeks. Miriam, trying to remain calm, shifts uneasily in her seat as she looks at both Alex and Jeff. So, we need to rattle a few sabers to keep the wolves at bay while we recover our boat. If the collision is as severe as they say, there's a problem with their boat too. Miriam again looks at both Alex and Jeff as she pinches the screen of her iPad. It's complicated. Any idea what this plan should look like? Marianne stares directly at Jeff and gently places her iPad on the table. That's why we're here. As you know, the Russians have put a larger flotilla to the sea, and the Korean Peninsula is about to get even more congested and dangerous. Interior, nuclear submarine control room. The sound of shallow breathing and an alarm over black. A flash of red can be seen intermittently in the dark, with Jack Tar, CO, framed in the control room with his crew. Some are bloodied and look nervous. The crew try to get monitors to work, as others check seals and gauges. The alarm stops after 30 seconds, and the control room goes black. A few seconds pass, and then the microphone crackles to life. I need an update on any injuries or casualties. A click is heard. Interior, mess room, bathed in a soft red, continuous light. There has clearly been disruption in the mess room, with various items broken and strewn as the result of an impact. It looks like we've sustained damage, and I need to know the severity and extent ASAP. Interior, galley. Various pots and pans and galley utensils are scattered throughout the galley space. I'll also need a time estimate on any remedial fixes. Interior, four ends, torpedo room. Let's also make sure we are safe from any unexpected effect of the impact. Reactor and armaments check, please. The crew looks shaken as they pick their way through detritus spread across the extent of the boat. Interior, CO's cabin. Various pictures and table items are either smashed or spread across the cabin randomly. Let's surface so that I can take a look and see what we are dealing with. 20 degree bow angle. Sonar check for any objects above us. Interior, Ministry Office in Whitehall, day. What are the Russians' movements? Other than the flotilla, there are two Victor-class subs and two Kotlin-class destroyers in the sector. Marianne tweezes her iPad to show a split screen with illustrations of the two vessel classes. She hands the iPad to Alex. Any other information? Our intel shows that the collision wasn't heavy, not enough for a hull breach. Alex hands the iPad to Jeff who starts to scroll through the pages. Our Northwood analysts suggest that the Russian response is unusually brisk. If you scroll up, you will see some of the latest detail. Jeff passes the iPad to Alex and points to a feature on the screen as he does so. Alex accepts it and addresses Miriam. It should be brisk. They have a boat down. If you recall the Kursk, they were slow. The speed could be political or it could be alarm due to the nature of the boat involved. Jeff directs a stare at Miriam as he leans forward to pull another buff folder towards himself. Elaborate. There has been a lot of SSBN activity in the search area. We assume to practice missile drills, not just Russian, the Americans too. Alex looks up from the iPad and directs a stare at Jeff. What's our response been? We have three surface ships on the way and two subs that were on patrol have been diverted to the area. Does that include Jack Targ's boat? That's classified. Alex bangs his fist sharply on the table and fixes Jeff with an intense glare. The silent service was my life for 20 years, Jeff. He's a friend. One of the boats is his. Jack must be right in the middle of it as he was last located between the collision site and flotilla. Interior, submarine, mess room in a soft white light. A few crew members pick their way through some damaged items with a bag that is being filled with debris on the tabletop. Those items that are still intact are carefully placed to one side. A glass object smashes, and crew members close by react with a shocked stare. Interior, four ends, torpedo room. Two ratings check the torpedo tubes for leaks. They use torches to examine the spaces between and along the length of the tubes. Reports, please. Let me have a status update. Now that we have normal light with the generator backup, any damage should be easier to spot. Interior, nuclear submarine control room. 
Jack unclicks the microphone and places it back onto its stand. He walks over to the periscope and opens up the handles, ready to take a look outside. Jack takes a slow pan with the periscope, rotating it gradually through 360 degrees. As he moves, he stops and pauses as he checks for detail. There is a growing rumble that appears to be coming from outside the sub. On completion, he folds the arms of the periscope up and gently leans his head against it. Anything, sir? What's that sound? Jack lifts his head and looks across the crew in the control room. His face is blank. He opens his mouth to speak. Exterior, an ocean in fading light. A mushroom cloud is ripening on the horizon as an unmanned drone dips low over the sea and drops sonobuoys along its flight path. Fade to black.